Welcome everybody to episode 163 of the effing title. I'm Big Husky. I'm Danute. And we are back. Well, Danute's back to his, 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 his usual setup today. And he's looking and he's looking good. I meant to say that earlier. You're looking good. Oh, thanks. You're Thank you. Um, how you been since the last time we uh, we did this? Uh, good. So it was kind of a hectic week, and then I was gone all weekend. <clears throat> we're gonna do the podcast elsewhere again, and then the plans changed, and then we had to delay it a little bit. We're still doing it today, though. Ooh, there we go. What are you doing? Yeah. If you don't mind me asking. Oh well, no, it just uh, we were gonna house it. Oh okay. And I had set up everything to be there for the weekend, and then. We were not house sitting anymore, so I was going to be at my girlfriend's, and then so uh, I was at my girlfriend's, and then it also snowed, so it was just kind of like I was like, I gotta go, I got stuff to do. I'm going to see a comedian in in Boston tonight. Ooh, okay, that'd be fun. So it was like I just had to sort everything around that. Awesome, awesome. Well, we yeah, we get to hear about that Stavros, next week. Then. Stavros Halkius. Ooh, why does that sound familiar? Stavi, baby. Why does that sound familiar? Uh, he's a, a fat bald comedian. Okay. He kind of he makes the rounds a lot. He uh, he's a big Ravens fan, so Raven. I forget what his his like character is. So he kind of has this like Ravens character going around. Okay. Um, the Stavros one I'm thinking of is there was a guy Stavros Flatley in England. Okay. He's a big 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 Greek guy, big fat Greek guy, and he would do the uh, Michael Flatley Lord of the Dance. Okay. And he would go out and he did that, and he did that on like uh, Britain's Got Talent one year. It was him and his kid <laughs> doing it. It was the funniest fucking thing. Um, yeah, no, it's good to hear. Good to hear. Glad to hear, glad to hear you having a good week. Glad to hear you had a good week. Yeah, how was your week? We're not talking about it. Moving on. Um, episode 163. <laughs> Here's a little, the fat bastard right there. Oh, okay, it's that guy. All right, yep, I know, yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's kind of, he, yeah, he's like pretty popular around right now. Yeah, I was gonna say. Well, I've been looks... listening to him for years. Uh, I hate to say it, big come town fan. Um, and no, I'm. I don't want to say the n word. Okay. Uh, <laughs> good. Uh, <laughs> it's this podcast he was on for like, I don't know, six years. Yeah, I think I listened to it for six years, and then he uh, didn't want to be on it anymore, and so now he's doing his own thing. Oh, all right, all right. He's really blowing up in stand up, stand up post pandemic. I dig it. I dig it. I yeah, post stand up pandemic. Damn. Yeah. Um. All right. So, what do we what do we talk about today? What do we What do we got on the agenda? What do we got on the agenda? Uh, uh Ant Man. Ant Man. Ant Man. Quant- right. Is Ant Man and the Wasp Quantum Mania? Right. I think it's just Ant Man Quantum Mania. Is it okay? Either way. I believe so. Either way, Ant Man fighting fucking uh, Michael. Uh, Jonathan Myers. I don't know if I said Michael. Jonathan Myers. Jonathan Majors. Majors. There we go. I was like, "Who's Myers?" <laughs> <laughs> yep. Um. So let's talk about that then. Well, well that's that's the, the 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 one on the brain right now. So the one on the brain. Do we want to go Actually, spoiler warning or do we want to give there. spoiler? What do we want to do? Let's go, because you don't care. I don't give a fuck. Spoiler flash. Spoiler flash. Cut to here. I mean, I, I, yeah. If if you don't You're want, like, I'm not adding time space. I, 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 I ain't adding shit. Yeah. Um, if you see this, I really enjoyed it. Okay. Nope. It is Ant Man and the Wasp: Quantum Mania. Okay. All right. I Which I will say, uh, Hope Van Dyme didn't really. She was like in the whole movie, but she wasn't. But they were never together. Okay. Interesting. Like they were together in the beginning, and they were like they're so in love. So, so the trailer, the trailers show it out to be their kid is growing up. She has now been smart. She's now the, s- the smart kid. She's figured yeah. out the way to get into the quantum realm, which she did. And now everyone's in the quantum realm. And then there's Kang, and Kang's all threatening, and he's going to be the next big baddie. And that's that's what we got from the trailers. And we also got a flying head yeah. that looks fucking stupid. Yep. So. From the trailers, did the movie... Did you see the movies? Did I see what? One and two. I saw one, and I saw bits and pieces of two. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so, it's... Yep, the daughter's a, a, an adult, and she's been working on a science project with... Uh, God, Michael... Who's the fucking dad? Grandfather? Uh, Scott. Uh, Michael Douglas. There we go, Douglas, yep. 
I was gonna say Hank so, Pym. Um, they like since they kind of glossed over it, but since you know, like uh, Paul Rudd disappeared for years, but yeah. not because of the the blip, because he got stuck in the quantumverse. Mm-hmm. So like when that happened, I guess he had taken over as like a grandfather. So they had developed this relationship, and they developed this thing where you can search and research the quantum realm with ever having to go there. So it was like this radio. It's like a two-way radio. They send in a signal. A signal comes back, and uh, Kang hacked into it and brought them here, oh, them okay. there. All so right. that's what that was. And the big thing is that the mom that they rescued in the second one that you kind of didn't see. Yeah, I know that they. I knew that they rescued her in the second one though. I didn't know that. So she had been stuck in the quantum realm for years. And, uh, yeah, for like thirty years. Yeah. They got her out, and she said there's nothing there. She'd been living alone, but apparently there's, like, a whole civilization down there and, like, this dictator who is Kang. So she knew about it the whole time, but was just kind and of... And just didn't tell them. And that was, like, I think that was probably the most frustrating thing about it, that she just, like, even they were there, they're like, what's going on? You told us no one was here. And she's like, not now. I'll tell you later. And then she never... And then, like, they kept going to... Like, they met, like, one of her boyfriends that she had down there. They, they met one of her, like, her old, like, resistance buddies, like... It just was like she just never explained anything, and I was like, "Dude, just take five minutes from the movie and explain just something. Just take the L and fucking explain it, this." It took a. It took you got pretty deep into the movie for them to explain it. And I was like, "Ugh." Okay. Um, Hope Van Dyne, awful mm-hmm. haircut, absolutely just awful haircut. Like, I I don't know, like, I I don't know if the actress had shaved her head before and like just tried to grow it out. But like I just like know. a top ten worst haircut I've ever seen in a movie. One of the things that I did hear is that the kid, um, one they recast her. First of all, didn't know if you yes. knew that. Two, I, I heard that, that the new one, like a lot of people aren't liking her. Um, and I don't know because if it's... it's it's a very it's a very even personality wise it's very different than uh, the old one. Yeah, and they almost try to make her like, uh. I, I, they're like almost like they're like <laughs> opening the realm where she could be like sexy Ant Man, Ant Girl. Okay. And not just Hope Van Dyne. That's weird. Yeah, because she's very adult in this movie. I know. Yeah. To, I know how to feel about that. And then the floating head yeah, is uh, the bad guy from the first movie. Yeah. Darren. Mm-hmm. He somehow got tri- he got sent down there, and he was like an abomination. And they turned him into this other abomination, and then he, in the end, he's a good guy. I I I saw online that you see his butt. Uh, kinda, but it's like uh like cartoon like little like cheeks. So not really you see his butt. Um, I I enjoyed it. It wasn't the best. Uh, they come across like this like tribe of like how is how gypsies. is how does Kang come off in the movie? Awesome. Does he come I off bet. like a a full on? This is the new. This is like like a Thanos dark side sort of like because that's what the way that they're trying to build him up. No, because right? he die. He dies in it. He does okay. But the whole thing is that it's there's not. Mo- there's, just, yeah, there's yeah. there's King the Conqueror. There's a Mortis who is also King. Like there's all these different versions. Yeah, so of the King of Conqueror did die in the post credit. It was it brought you to like the Kang world, and they brought everyone there. They're like, oh, we brought everyone here. And it just was like hundreds of thousands of Kangs. And uh, he was like the outcast who may have not been that evil. It was like the, he was like, he did bad things to be like the ends justify the means. Mm-hmm. Because I guess he was trying to save the world by killing all these other things. Okay. Because it had to do with, um, I guess he was the good one, but th- did bad things. He was like chaotic. The chaotic uh, good. Good. I, I guess, guess yeah. But, yeah. All right. Okay. Interesting. I don't know, no, I've heard, I don't know anything about it, so I've I don't. Heard, I'm I've, not really one to speak on it. I've heard mixed things. Uh, Jagger said that he liked it. Jagger thought it was a good film. He thought it was a fun film. Um, it's fun. The thing that I would say is that, like, he, he is so you've obviously seen the trailers, right? Yeah. Would you say that the the almost the atmosphere and attitude of the trailers match the actual movie? Because I feel like you know Marvel. What I'm be honest with you, I don't know if I ever I just saw any of the trailers. Really? Okay. Because uh, yeah. Marvel, I feel like has a very bad run of 
the trailers portraying one thing and then the movie being another. Like if I always think back to Age of Ultron. Age of Ultron was set up to be like Ultron was like the ultimate kind of bad. I think that was my least mean, favorite Marvel movie. Menacing, right? Like all of this, and then like there's a fucking two minute long dialogue of him talking about what are the what are the small human school babies? That's it, babies. You know, it's like what the what the fuck is going on here? You know? And Captain America tried to choke him. Yeah, I was waiting for you to say it. Just uh... it, like. It's just, it's it was one of those things that like when they showed the to me when they showed the trailers if you watch the trailers the trailers Ooh. really come off heavy as like Kang is going to kill everyone in the movie he was that was the whole thing but yeah, no in the trailer though it comes off as he is going to not like he will but like he's like someone in the movie dies and it's not Kang that's the way every trailer comes off as like, yeah uh, I think only one main character died or main side character. It was like this dude that had a big laser head. Yeah, see, like in in the trailers, every one of them, it looks like either Kang's gonna kill Cassie, Kang's gonna kill uh, Scott Ant Man, or or he's gonna like all the trailers made him out to look like it was going like he was going to kill someone. So that's no, that, yeah, he tried that. You know, they won. It was a marvel. Yeah, but like, like that was one of the things that I was always that I was wondering with it is that because like that's the big. You know, to me, like I said, that's the big thing with Marvel is Marvel's trailers show one thing, but then the movie itself is. I uh, yeah, I, didn't, I don't think I saw any of the trailers. I just knew it was coming out. That's fair. I knew things about it. That's fair. Because I was like, I was, I was like, it was one of those things. I was like, eh, I'll go see it anyways. I went and saw it at uh, Smitty's. 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 All right, so, what's your obscure rating? And then would you would you recommend me see it in theaters, Disney Plus, or on regular just PBS? Uh, I give it like three, three point eight Murdoch butts out of five. Okay, all right, that's a solid Murdoch. score. That's solid. Murdoch butts. See, <laughs> don't even say it right. Uh, I think you. Yeah, watch it on Disney Plus. Yeah, okay. yeah. I think uh, I really, I really like Paul Rudd. I think Jonathan Majors. Uh, if you don't know who he is, you should. Yeah, I know him from because uh, he's going to be in the new Creed movie. He's the brother. Mm-hmm. And have uh, you have you seen anything about that recently? No. So they've started doing the runs for the movie, right? <laughs> yeah. And uh, they got together, and it was uh, Jonathan Mayer is there was saying about how um, Michael B. Stewart was Michael B. Jordan told him about some anime and like fight scenes uh, in anime. Yeah. And like, there's apparently a couple. Fi- there's a couple moments in the movie that are tributes to anime. That we like if you're if you know it you'll know it sort of thing, so I was like that was kind of cool hearing that and him being you know it's like it's like yeah one of them's from Dragon Ball Z, you know yeah because Michael B is a huge anime fan mm-hmm. and then uh, have you seen him in anything else? Which one, Jonathan Mayers? Yeah. Um, Did you watch Loki? I saw a lot of the. He's only in the end of Loki. Yeah, I was gonna say I've seen a lot of the stuff of. About Loki, but I never actually watched Loki. Oh, so classic Loki for the win. Um, let's see here. Uh, Hostiles, White Boy Rick, Out of the Blue, The Black White Man, Boy Rick's and good. San Fran. Is White Boy Rick the... Matthew he's about a drug dealer. Yeah. It's the one with McConaughey in it. Yeah, uh, he's Captain the dad. State, Guilty, Jungle Devotion Land. Devotion is really good. I can, I can throw you... I can say I, things I've watched. I'll go through it. How about that? Yeah. Uh, Devotion is a uh, Korean War movie. That's really it. Just kind of came out. Okay. Uh, came out last year. Streaming. Uh, the Harder They Fall on Netflix is really good. It's a black western, and he's oh, the protagonist. He was in Lovecraft Country. Lovecraft. He's the main character in Lovecraft Country. Yep, it's really good. Yep, that's where I know him from. Uh, the Five Bloods. He uh, was. So, did you see the Defy Bloods? I feel like we're saying that. Have you seen Defy Bloods? <laughs> Defy Bloods? No, I have not. It's a Netflix movie about like uh, Dude, black soldiers in Vietnam. Say, who Vietnam War squad and a treasure. Uh, who dubbed themselves the Bloods? <clears throat> but so uh, he's in that as a son of one of the soldiers who goes back and he goes with them. Paul Walter Hauser's in it too. Um, I think I believe it's Chadwick Boseman's last movie. Uh, Spike Lee, you should check that out. It's on Netflix. 
Yeah, all right here it says uh, it says here it says and Chadwick Boseman in his last movie released during his lifetime. Oh no, so maybe not because it says during his lifetime. Last movie released during his well, lifetime. During his lifetime. Now that now okay. I feel bad looking this going to look boy, up Rick, last movie. Awesome. Uh, the last Black Man in San Francisco is probably one of the most surprising movies I've ever seen. Which one was um, that? I thought it was like uh, it was beautiful. Which one? Which um, the last Black Man in San Francisco. Okay. Uh, wonder how that was best friend. Interesting. It's actually based on like, so the main character, the direct. It's like the director wrote it about that guy's life because it, this. It's like uh, that was actually his house and that was the story. The story of the movie is about the story of this kid's life, like a, uh, not like a. Oof. So um, it looks like. The last movie for Chadwick Boseman may have been Moraney's Black Bottom. Is that a sex thing? Uh, he plays Levy Green in it. Levy? L-E-V-Y? L-E-V-E-E. Oh. Yeah. Leave. <clears throat> I rewatched uh, 21 Blocks the other day, and I was like, hindsight... He looked real sick. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's unfortunate. I was one of those things I've, I actually watched uh, Black Panther 2. Uh, and uh, it was interesting. When I got to the end of it, I'm sitting there and I was like, I was kind of like, I wonder how this movie would have went if he was still alive. And then I started thinking about it and I was like, I can only imagine if they did keep the Namor storyline still, but with him, that fight scene. <sighs> Yeah, Namor was awesome in that movie. I, I, Regardless of what you think, I think that actor killed it. Yes, I, I, I. At first, when they first announced that they were doing the, uh, that they were like basically like switching up the, uh, um, kind of like the I'm origin. Like yeah. I was kind of like, I didn't know about, I, I mean, I think we talked about it. It was like, I don't know about that. You know, it kind of seems a little bit bullshit, a little bit this, that. But then like, visually seeing it, it was kind of one of those things. It was like, this actually is really fucking cool. Like, yeah, it was, you know, um, it's also Girl Scout cookie season. Ooh. Eating on the podcast. Um, what's your favorite Girl Scout cookie? You know, these are new ones I've not tried. New ones? They don't have new... What the fuck? S'mores. And the verdict uh, Samoa, is... though. There we go. That's... the yep. Smaller tagalongs. I mean, the OGs. Mm -hmm. oh, uh, uh, I don't like mint. See, so. I, I, I like mint, so I'd, I, I fuck with the mint one, too, but... S'mores or mint. Those are my two. How are those? So we got, like... Well, s'mores... That's they're a little like crackers, and you'd like they're like Oreos. <gasps> they got a chocolate and cream filling. Oh, uh, mixing. Right, you're my... Mixing them both. Um, oh. yeah. So we had uh, so so Ant Man and the Wasp that just came out. I think uh, um, out of ten. I don't know, five point eight eight. Is it one of those ones where you would watch it again, or is it like a I'll like? Watch it again. Yeah. Now is it one of those things yeah. where you would take time out of the day to be like, you know what, I want to watch that today, or is it one of those things if where I... it's like, you know, like you see it and you're like, oh, I have an hour. Yeah, that that's what it'll be. It would be that one. Okay. Um, it's, I'll watch it again. It's, it's not like, it's not going to win any awards. Yeah. But it wasn't that great. But it was like, it was fun. I think that it was for. I think from what, like I said, from what I've heard, um, them introducing Kang and having Kang be the next big, the next big bad that they're pushing forward, and introducing him in the first movie, right? No matter what, yeah. I feel like it was kind of going to be one of those things. Was like there, there's going to be some backlash because of the way they handle it. That was kind of an original thing that I thought, but. I mean, but you gotta remember. When's the think about it? When's the last? What's the last Marvel movie we had? Exactly. Like, when's the last time? Like, I can't remember the last time a Marvel movie came out. Um, it felt like for. 
the last Marvel movie would have been, oh, uh, what? Um, would it have been uh, Wakanda Forever? Oh, yeah. I guess that. Would that, that be it? That was like six months ago. Hold up a second. I was, now I want to know. Now I am curious, and I would like to know. It was it was Wakanda Fever. Was it? Okay. I, also... it came out November 11th. I guess that was only three months ago. Yeah, just whatever. Um, I mean, like, let's take a look here. I just got a, I just put up a list, um, or a list of movies right now. So yeah, so Creed three comes out on the third. Um. So, the other ones that we've had recently, Cocaine Bear, hearing a, hearing a lot of good things about Cocaine Bear, which... Really great cast, Elizabeth Banks directing. I mean, let's uh, be honest here. It's it, We all knew it was going to be a fuck-around movie. But it's I think it's a a lot of effort into a, like a, yeah, a fuck-around movie. Exactly. It's, it's one of those things that's like, there's no way that was real, right? Oh, that was real? Hmm. You know? Um... And then other than that, though... Some liberties, though, of course. Of course, yeah. Um, Other than that, though, uh, Magic Mike's Last Dance, haven't heard anything about that. I haven't either. It's in theaters. So actually, uh, so I was pulling up uh, tickets. I was with my girlfriend. I was buying tickets. Mm -hmm. I was like, we could go see Magic Mike instead. They're like, oh, they're re-showing Magic Mike? I was like, no, it's the third one. They're like, she was like, what? I was like, (laughs) yeah, he, he goes to Europe and like gets a new girlfriend, this and that. Um, knock at the so, cabin. Uh, I've heard uh, a buddy of mine watched it the other night. He said it was real bad. Um, I've heard he that, it's, that it's a typical M Night Shyamalan movie. That's what I get. I gather, and I liked the last couple, so I'm I'm still going to give it a chance. Uh, Ron Weasley is from Boston, apparently, so I it'll be, it'll be probably weird to see. Yeah, His Boston accents are always really bad, anyways. I, I heard that Dave Bautista though did a, another fantastic job. Like, so him. I guess if you're familiar with the the the, the novel, source, yeah. It's he's not the right casting, but really, yeah, because I guess he was like a re- he's like a really I don't know that's what my, what my friend said. I'll listen so, to my fr- I like that's what my friend said. I don't know. Well, so the reason why I say it like that is because I remember I watched a I don't know if it was a TikTok or YouTube video about uh, it was something about it and it was um, M Night Shyamalan saying about how the actor one of the reasons why he hasn't released this movie is because of that main actor. And he hasn't found someone who can portray that character. And he said that with the way that Dave Bautista has been acting recently, Dave kind of perfectly fits the role, like that sort of thing. So that's why I had seen. But I mean, I don't fucking, know. I don't, I don't fucking read. M. Night I'm not also stuff, butchered so. Avatar. So yeah, exactly. Um, Jesus. That's... Oh, did did I send you the clip of the uh, fight choreographers for Avatar? The new one, or yeah, I, my it buddy sent to me. I must have. Have left it. It was about like the stunt people like practicing, and it was like, "This look, this is gonna look cool. This is gonna look good. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. I'm glad. To, I'm glad. I mean, that that's one of those ones. Was like when they started announcing all that stuff. It's like mm, people aren't gonna be happy, you know. And then it's like more and more stuff starting to come out about, it, and it's like, okay, okay, well, it's, okay. The, right, the writers are working on it. The actual writers of the mm-hmm. show. So, yeah, I mean, that's always big. Um, you yeah, know, so movies are coming up here soon. We got a new Scream movie because that's. Know what we what we need, um, Shazam: Fury of the Gods. That's gonna be great. And the, well, I I think I'm gonna like it. Um, I have seen some things come out about it recently that are very interesting. Um, okay. Apparently, they were forced recently, and by recently I mean like within the last couple months, to actually film a, a new end credit scene. Well, that's probably because of all the people being fired. And well, it's so and... what it is. It, this is a rumor. It's a rumor. Um, apparently, James Gunn put his wife in it. Well, I mean, he'll do that. Yeah. Well, he's done it in every fucking movie. You know, he did it in Black Adam. Apparently, he does it in this too, though. And she tries to recruit Shazam to become a member of the Justice Society of America. That's a rumor. Rumor. So, who the fuck knows? Um, I'm gonna see it. Am I excited to see it? No. Are you? Well, are, okay. How about this? Are you? More, which one are you more excited to see? This or the Flash? Neither. <laughs> I, the, here, I will put it. I will put. I will put it out there right now. I am most excited to see Black uh, Blue Beetle this year. 
Okay. Blue Beetle is the one DC movie I'm excited to see. I think The Flash is... I think what they did for that is absolute bullshit. Let's put it like this. Within the first season of the TV show of The Flash, Ezra Miller was announced as The Flash for the DCEU. It's been nine... That long ago? It's been nine seasons of The Flash TV show. They're ending it this year. And now we're finally getting a movie and they're doing Flashpoint. As the first movie, which I think is the dumbest fucking move on the face of the earth. But they're rebooting everything, so fuck it. Who cares? It doesn't matter anymore. Um, apparently, I haven't gotten to it yet, but apparently, uh, this is another fun one. Uh, Aquaman, Lost Kingdom, has garnered the worst reviews ever. Is that the third one? Second one. Because got, everything got pushed back, remember? Oh, man, I thought that came yeah. out already. No. Okay. So, um... It's gotten the worst reviews out of all of the, like, the pre-screenings. And this is where it gets real fun. You ready for this? Yep. For the first time in a long time, apparently, people were walking out of the pre-screening. Okay. That's how bad it is. It's like, wow. You know, so, yeah. Well, funny continuation of that. Did you see the preview for Fast 10? No, oh, yeah. Yeah, Jason Momoa as the bad guy, which I like. He's too, he seems too lovable to be a bad guy at this point. He does. I like the fact that they tied it in to an earlier one. That's the thing that I like the most. Or the the scene when you watch it, you're like, dude, they're murdering people with this safe right now. Mm -hmm. And it's one of those things. It's like it's cool because they put him in the scenes, and it, you wouldn't have fucking known that he wasn't there watching the originals. Oh no! They filmed it. They filmed them with it there when they did Fast Five. Oh yeah, they knew. Back then. <laughs> they knew back then. This is this is a this is a fucking movie series that's gonna go. John Cena's in it. Thad Castle's in it. They're like, hey man, right John, now Jason we're Statenham oh, that's right. is in it. Castle's in. Alan Richter, Richardson. I forgot. About it. Yeah, I yeah. did the I did uh, the I did the trailer reaction to it, and that's the one thing that I got. I was like, oh Thad. Yeah. Um. Man. I, well, I'm glad because he like never really gets. He like should be a bigger he, actor. I think. Yeah. He got fucked over with the whole Ninja Turtles thing, and then he went and did. Uh. He was in Titans, and he did a good job in Titans, and now he's in what Jack is it Jack Reacher? It's Reacher. Yeah. He's doing a fantastic job there. You know. Yeah. So, Reacher is really good. Um. John Wick Four comes out this next month. Um. Which apparently was ready to come out like I think in 2021. Oh really? They pushed it back. They just. Yeah, like I think it was. It's been ready for that long. Let's see, I mean, no matter what, let's be honest. That's going to be good. Um, we got Dungeons. And May twenty first, twenty twenty one was the original <laughs> release date on that. Um, Dungeons it's and Dragons. It was like it was ready, like it was... but it got pushed back because of COVID. Oh, okay. Um, like it was ready and done. I guess I get it. I mean, it's one of those things. You think about that movie. That's going to be a big draw, right? They want to make sure it's a big draw. So I get it. So, originally set for worldwide theatrical release by Lionsgate on May 21st, 2021, John Wick 4 was delayed first due to the COVID-19 pandemic and then Reeves' commitments with The Matrix Resurrections. There we go. Makes sense, then. Um, which, honestly, let's be honest, they probably make more money now than they would have two years ago. So, uh, Dungeons & Dragons, I've heard mixed reviews. I saw a clip of it the other day, which made me laugh. Yeah, was it the one where they were interviewing the dead, the dead dude? Yeah, yeah, that was very, that was funny. Um, I, I thought that was legitimately funny. A thing that no one knew we needed is a Tetris origin story. Have you seen the uh, Taron Edgerton? Yeah. Uh, Taron, a uh, fucking yeah. what's his Taron Edgerton, on, uh, yeah, yeah, on Apple, yeah, which uh, apparently is a true story. Which yep. that looks, that looks fun yeah, as hell. That's fucking awesome. But that's that's so. the next, that's the next month. And then after that, I mean, if you want, we can just keep going through this right now. We we'll go to the next. Let's do two months. We we'll do the next two months, right? So we can do March okay. and April. So then April, are you ready for April? April is. Oh. oh, before we do that, I last week I went to Fun Spot, the world's largest arcade. Oh yes, Fun Spot. I actually went to the rec like the, rec the it's the wor world's largest retro arcade. Yep. So it's all retro games, and I actually played. I was playing Pong. I was playing. Galaga, did playing you Star play? Wars. You, ready, you ready for this fucking perfect transition? What, did you play yeah. Super Mario Brothers? No, because they don't have. It, it was no, I played. They, I, I, so I actually took a picture of Donkey Kong, which is what Mario's from. Yeah, and uh, it was the one that the world 
like so that's like the world record arcade mm-hmm. when you go to set world records you go there because those are like the trusted machines oh yeah that's 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 the the joint um, that's the mecca of retro gaming yes yeah, so that movie comes out in april i'll go see it I'm, uh i i genuinely just don't jack black I, I, I feel bad because i watched the i watched the trailers right and I see, and I see Jack Black's uh, Bowser, and I'm like, "This is awesome! This is Bowser!" And then he'll say something, and it immediately takes me out of the entire thing. And I'm like, "What's well, really Jack funny? It, it's a beautiful movie. It looks awesome. It does visually. It looks good, other than Mario's not cheeked up, but I mean, other than that, how many Italian plumbers do you know with ass? None. Fair. How many plumbers do you know with ass? I know, I know some. They all have no ass. All right. So. All right. Fair. Fair. Yeah. Well, maybe this, think the butt cracks always out? Maybe this changes the stereotype, you know. Uh, yeah. But no, that's that was my that's my big thing so far with it is like well, other than the Chris Pratt sounds fucking atrocious as Mario. As long um, as he talks about Trump, uh, like Biden stealing the election, I'll be happy with it. <laughs> um, but Jack Black, all the plumbers I know, <laughs> Jack Black, like that's my big one though. Is like yeah. you hear him as Bowser, and for a split second, it's like motherfucker, that's Bowser. But then after a couple seconds, though, it's like. He'll say something, and he says it as Jack Black and not as Bowser, and it's like, "It's a me, uh, Chris Pratt." I don't, I, <laughs> it's Chris a Pratt me. Have uh, like a, a voice, Chris a Pratt. Voice that you can replicate. Um, apparently, Ben Affleck's doing a movie called Air that actually doesn't look bad. Okay, what's that one? It's about uh, the uh, Nike Jordan deal. Oh yes, that does look good. It actually, I like, did it, see a yeah. trailer for that one. Uh, Sony Vaccaro, a shoe salesman at Nike, works to sign rookie Michael Jordan to a deal to wear their shoes. And it's, uh, it's done by Ben, so you know it's going to be fucking. It's far, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Uh, this is for the podcast, right? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, a surprise one. I watched the trailer and I didn't. I wasn't sure about it, so I just watched the trailer without doing a reaction. I, was, I should have done a reaction to it. The Pope's Exorcist. It looks very good. It looks fucking awesome. I yeah, love looks... I love Russell Crowe in these weird fucking roles. It looks real good. I love him in these um, weird roles. So for everyone out there that doesn't know, it's a supernatural horror film that's basically about like the Pope. Like there's an exorcist. Like there needs to be an exorcism, and the demon's like, "Oh, you don't know." Like the Pope's the bad guy, and then Russell Crowe is father, whatever the fuck his name is, and he like basically becomes possessed. It looks like anyway, like it, like it, it looks wild. If you haven't seen the trailer, so the, go watch. So it. he was directly under the Pope as the Pope's exorcist, where he like he set out directly by the Vatican. He only reports to the Pope. People keep trying to bring him down, but he's like, no, the Pope's my boss. You're not my boss. Yeah, who the fuck do you think you are? Yeah, and then it goes from that, and it looks really good. It looks almost similar to like the right. Did you see that? This sounds familiar. It was another. It was uh, uh, Anthony Hopkins as a priest yes. who did exorcisms. Yep. yep, I've seen that one. Um, exorcisms. So, um, and then other than that, the next really we got the Covenant, which is the next Guy Ritchie film, stars uh, Jake oh, Gyllenhaal. The the Guy Ritchie film that's uh, not a Guy Ritchie film. Mm-hmm. Did you see a trailer for that? Mm-hmm. It, it, I was like, when is it they're gonna? When are they gonna call someone a cunt? That was like what I was saying. I was like, <laughs> I'm watching when, it. I'm when, like, when's, uh, when's I'm, Jake Gyllenhaal gonna drop a cunt in there? I'm watching it. I'm like, okay, this looks interesting. This looks interesting. This is a Guy Ritchie film. I'm like, this doesn't look like a Guy Ritchie film. <laughs> oh no, sorry. No, what I had said, I was making the joke. I was like, when does Jason Statham show up and call someone a cunt? Oh yeah, that's what, that was the joke. Um, Evil Dead Rise. Uh, Chevalier, 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 Chevalier. <laughs> it's based on a life of a titular, titular French Caribbean musician, Joseph Baloney. Blagna. Chevalier de Saint de Georges. It looks interesting. Um, and then we go into May. I'm just here because it's here now. Uh, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. Uh, Fast 10. Do you like the Guardians series? Men Can't Jump? White Men Can't Jump. Uh, Sorry, uh, Jack Harlow. It's going to be a Hulu. It's a show or a movie? Movie. Movie. I was going to say, didn't we already have one of those? 
it's a remake. Okay. Uh, we also have The Little Mermaid as well uh, in um, May. Uh, the Guardians movies are, like, they're okay. You don't hate them. I like the fir- I like the first one more than I like the second. I think the second one's kind of dumb. Um, there's... I think that them being done is part of their charm. <clears throat> yeah, I think that there was one major part that I had a problem with in the first one, but we won't get into that, really. Because it's just a very niche thing. Okay. Where apparently... So, um, who is Ronan the Destroyer? Yes. Is like supposed to be one of like the best military minds in the Marvel Universe. And he got beat by a dance. Like, I just, I fucking hate it. That whole sequence, I fucking hated so much. No, he got beat by a Celestial. I'm gonna fight you. Um, and then we go into, you know, bro, G- okay, June? Just June? June? Goes hard. First two weeks. Doesn't need to go that hard. And then it gets, at, bro, Okay, so you ready for this? This is June. June 2nd. Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. That's gonna fucking kill. Then you go the Boogeyman. Probably also gonna do pretty well. Right? Then you go to June 9th. June 9th you have Transformers Rise of the Beasts. Oof. So, let's be honest. It's an oof, but people are gonna go watch it because it's Transformers and it's... And it. They're finally putting the beasts in there. Right? Then you're getting the movie Strays. With Will Ferrell voicing a fucking dog. Okay. That's probably going to get some views. <laughs> then you go to June 16th. This is what's coming out on June 16th. You have... Extraction 2. On yeah. Netflix. Yeah. You, you see the first one? No. Oh, it's awesome. You have Asteroid City. You have Elemental. Which is a Walt okay. Disney Pixar film. Oh, I saw I saw the trailer for it when I was uh, mm-hmm. at. Uh, it looks really cool. And then you have the Flash. Oh, I'm sorry. What's up? Then you have the Flash. So the Flash is this the the Flash's com- competition is a three is a, at this point a two week old Spider Man movie, which is it's gonna yeah still gonna be killing it. A Transformers movie, which we know will kill it no matter what, because it's fucking Transformers. Yeah, and you're yeah. going up against a Pixar movie called The Elemental, which looks incredible, right? But then it doesn't stop there, though, Danute. It doesn't stop there. The following week, it doesn't get any easier, because now you're going up against No Hard Feelings and Joyride. So a little bit of a, little bit of a bumper week, but then you end the month... Danute, you end the month. You end the month with Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. Ooh, I am going to go see that. Danute, the, they, <clears throat> Warner Brothers thinks The Flash is going to do well, and they put it in between Spider-Man, Transformers, up against Elemental, and then going up against a uh, Indiana Jones movie. Oh. So Shia he, LaBeouf's not going to be in the new one. No, he's not. But here's, Shame. So, so, here's, so here's the genuine question. Is there any way this does well? With with, because e- even with thinking about it, that right there is going to be tough to do well against. I don't give a fuck who you are, what movie it is. You're going up against. I-, I will say this right now: if we're talking comic book movies as a whole, the very first Spider-Man into the Spider Verse, I would put top five. Yeah, a as a whole, would. right? Yeah. So you're going up against the sequel to that. You're going up against Transformers, which is just a franchise that everybody fucking loves. Nobody really hates the Transformers movies. We hate moments. It's Transformers, dude. We hate moments of them, right? It's like, oh, fucking yeah. Transformers. We're real fucking watching. I actually really like the last two. I actually rewatched the uh, first Mark Wahlberg one like a month ago. Well, that's because the, was that like, was weird because just out of nowhere, they're just like, Romeo and Juliet Law says that if we've been dating uh, since. You know da, 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 da. I, watching through it, he wasn't even the worst part. The daughter was just awful. I'm so oh, yeah. like. She was like, uh, fuck you, dad. And then the son's like, hey, man, I want to be friends. But, like, she's, you know, like, I got to make her happy. That's, like, <laughs> exactly what it was the entire movie. Um, but, you know, like, I like, like, so you're going up against those. Then it's The Flash, which has been pushed back multiple times. The studio's in fucking shambles. You have Ezra Miller as the lead of it, right? 
And then it's going up against that weekend is going up against Elemental. And then you end it with Indiana Jones, which is a franchise that's lasted how long? It's older than us. Um, so I'm reading here that they are going to mention something about Shia LaBeouf in the new one. Like he died or something happened to him. He's going to be mentioned. Because isn't he, isn't he the son or the grandson? No. Um, I thought he was. Yeah, uh, he's the, I think he's the son. He I think. the son, right? I believe he's the son. Or like Maybe. they alluded to or that he, or he's not. I don't know. So in, so premise, in 1969, American archaeologist and adventurer Indiana Jones lives Against the backdrop of the space race, Jones is uneasy over the fact the U.S. government has recruited former Nazis to help beat the Soviet Union into competition to make it to space. His goddaughter, Elena Shaw, accompanies him on his journey. Meanwhile, Jürgen Voller, a, a, a NASA member, an ex-Nazi involved with the moon landing program, wishes to make the world a better place. So my question is, is this a... He is the son of Indiana Jones. So is this movie taking place in fucking Today Day or like 1960? I'm so confused. 1969. I'm so confused. My brain hurts. <laughs> but yeah, so that's that's June. I just, I genuinely, and then fucking, yeah, okay. There's, there's, I'm, I'm putting this out there right now. And if people want to come at me, they can come at me in the comments. There's there's no way the Flash does well. <laughs> no, no. So so uh, I just I I, yeah. I I scrolled down to July, Danu. That's what I did. I scrolled down to July. So you're putting the Flash against Spider Man Across the Spider Verse, Transformers, Elemental, Indiana Jones in the month of June. You ready for the month of July? You ready for this shit? Here we go. Month of July. Insidious. <laughs> That's how you start it. Mission Impossible. Oppenheimer. Yeah, yeah, oh. Barbie. Huge summer at the movies this year, huh? Like, like, just, there's, like I said, there's no way. With this competition that they have, there's no fucking way. Oh, no, that's going to, yeah. It's going to be in theaters for like two weeks. I mean, they're showing it at fucking, did you hear the other news? They're showing it at Comic-Con. The movie itself? They're showing the entire movie, the entire Flash movie, two months early at Comic-Con. Ooh. Because they're, they're really hoping people like it. Well, no, because apparently that's how that's how much faith they have in the movie and how good it is. <laughs> I'm, sitting, I'm sitting there like... What if they're like, it comes out there like, this movie actually is amazing? Then I'll, I mean, I'm going to watch it anyway because it's a DC movie. I watch all of them, right? Yeah. I genuinely don't believe it will be. I, like... I've, I've just one. The acting already in the trailers just looks fucking atrocious. First of all, two, they completely took the, like the kind of gritty look of DC and already fucking whitewashed that shit, right? And then three, a it like it just it looks bad, bro. It looks bad. There's scenes in it that like you take like, and you can do this with every movie, so don't get me wrong here. But like when you're promoting pictures and scenes and movies, right, you want to do the best ones, right? Or the like the high quality ones. Almost every fucking major picture from this movie looks like a cut scene from PlayStation Three. Speed skating. Exactly. Which I still I still think that's a cool thing, you know, with it being. But still, I just I I think it's the wrong move. I've thought it's the wrong uh -huh. move since they since they got rid of fucking who was the first guy they had that was going to do it. Let me take a look at this real quick. Rick Fama Fama Yua Fama Fam Yua F A M U Y I W A <laughs> him. Okay, so he did. This is the movies that he did before he was supposed to take. So he was supposed to do the movie, right? He did uh, The Wood, Brown Sugar, Talk to Me, Our Wedding, Our Family Wedding, and Dope. Dope's really good. So Dope <laughs> so Dope was the movie that he did, and then he was supposed to do the Flash movie. And he wanted to do a basic Flash movie that was like, here's the Flash, introducing some villains, get the rogues gallery going, that sort of thing. And Warner Brothers at the point had already wanted to get rid of Zack's stuff, and they were like, no, Flashpoint. 
and, and he's like, "That's a little, uh, that's a little too much." For well, me. well, and well, Zach was already saying that, like, like we'll flashpoint everything after my, this entire first run's done. You can flashpoint everything because by the time we do that, it's going to be ten years. So after ten years of having the the Snyder universe, basically flashpoint the shit, and then you can re go again, right? Yeah. So yeah, and he's he's a present day writer on the Mandalorian. So I mean. You know, I feel like they that like they fucked up there with that whole thing. So he pitched a version of the film in line with my voice, humor, and heart. While it's disappointing that we couldn't come together creatively on a project, I remain grateful for the opportunity. So yeah, uh, but I just I pretty... we're getting... Who's directing it now. James Gunn. No. Directing it now is uh, Andy Muschietti, the director for It, the It movies. Oh, interesting. Mm -hmm. um, also, random, random piece of news here. Did you know that Meg is getting a, has, has gotten a sequel and is coming out in August? Already? Not Megan. Meg. Oh. Uh, the oh, Megalodon. Meg. No, no, just Meg. Meg 2. The Trench. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, apparently the first one did well enough so they could go, hey, we're going to do a sequel because Jatham Staten is still in it. <laughs> Paige Kennedy is in it. Oh, he directed Mama. That Mama was awesome. Mama was awesome. Um, Mama was so. Huh, Mama. Yeah, no, he's I, directing I, Attack on Titan. A movie about Attack on Titan. I have no idea, to be honest with you. The no, no, he is. He's going. He's making a, a live action Attack on Titan. Uh, okay, so apparently I just didn't realize this was the year of sequels that no one ever needed or wanted. Um, uh -huh. So we have... Uh, oh, so Blue Beetle comes out in August. So that's going to be around football okay. time, but I'm going to tell you right now, it doesn't matter even if we are in football podcast time, we'll do a podcast reviewing Blue Beetle. Like Okay. Um, I actually... Because uh, I'm very yes, excited for that movie. I keep saying I don't know who that is, but I do know who yeah. I've, no. we've um, talked about. It. Yeah. So The Equalizer 3... Okay, so September is the month of sequels. Interesting, because Equalizer 2 was uh, his first sequel. Mm -hmm. So, Equalizer 3. Okay. The Nun 2. Okay. My, so big, I I like to... my big Fat Greek Wedding 3. Okay. <laughs> Expendables 4. Okay. Expendables 4. The Ready for the first three names on this one? Actually, let's go first four, now that I see the fourth. Okay. Jason, Jason Staten. So he's busy this year. Fitty Scent. Uh -huh. Megan Fox. Okay. Dolph Lundgren. Randy Couture. So that movie's going to be incredible. So that's September. Um, August is kind of a wishy wash month. So kind of cool that Blue Beetle comes out that month. Because it should do well then. Um, Not a huge cast on Expendables 4. No, Expendables 4, really kind of small. I mean, Sylvester Stallone's at the very end of the listing as well. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, Jason Statham, 50 Cents, Megan Fox, Dolph Lundgren, Tony Ja, who's like... Oh, I forgot Tony, Eco yeah. Wise, who, they're all big in the Indonesian world. He goes awesome. Um, Andy. Lovey yes. Tran, who was a early, yeah. like, Instagram model. And I, then, like, I, Andy Garcia, I, and that's I it. I was say Andy Garcia. Um... Okay, okay, so October is the month of interesting. So first off, we, we're going to have Paw Patrol. Right? Yeah. Uh, we have uh, Craven the Hunter. Which is interesting because apparently the way they're doing it is that it's not the Craven the Hunter we know of. And it's funny because he's the Predator, but he got predated on... <laughs> So apparently, uh, Craven the Hunter is going to be like his son. So Craven the Hunter, the one we know of, the one that like is like hunts big game and everything, it's is Russell Crowe is the old man. 
and his son, Aaron Taylor Johnson, doesn't want to hunt people. Or something like that. He's more of an activist. There's, I read something about that. I could be wrong now. I remember reading that, though. Uh, the Exorcist film. Untitled Exorcist film. So there's that. Uh, Dam Damsel. Saw 10. Is that a 10? Is X10? Yes. We're, we're getting Saw fucking 10. Hold up a second. I need to click on this. As a Saw enthusiast. Wait a minute. So Tobin Bell is back. The person who played Amanda is back. What the fuck? I saw Saw 2 in 1. <laughs> this film is the 10th overall in this. Filming this took place in Mexico City and is set to be released here. That's about all we know. Just because we made Spiral doesn't mean Saw ceases to exist. Just because Spiral is here, that doesn't mean there won't be a Saw 9. This Spiral is not the ninth film in the Saw franchise. There easily Did you see Spiral? Be, I did. I liked it. Uh, there easily could be a Saw 9 that follows Jigsaw. I think they're waiting to see how Spiral goes and how it affects the audience. Da -da -da -da, writers, previous two entries... Jigsaw and Spiral confirmed the script was completed in this. Da -da -da -da, it was previously helmed. Uh, Saw 6 and 3D. Yeah, I'm so lost then. I don't fucking know what's going on. I did see Spiral. I thought Spiral was kind of cool. It was it was the typical Saw movie. Like down to the core. It was Chris um, Rock. It was Chris Rock. It was, it was, it was, I thought it was a cool take of it being like kind of like... I was like, I look up to this guy. Um... Okay, hold the fuck. November, Denuton. Okay. Right. What's the podcast this week, this week? We're just talking about all the movies that are coming out this year. November. We kick it off on the 3rd. On the 3rd. Dune Part 2. Okay. We haven't seen anything about it yet. Dune Part 2. So now the next oh. one is The Marvels, which I think has been pushed so i don't know if this is pre-push or post-push but i read somewhere that it got pushed did you see eternals i saw enough of it to know what it is okay i thought there was bits and pieces of it that looks okay okay yeah you didn't see it you saw every okay i saw all, i saw i saw enough of the movie to know what the movie is let's put it like that okay yeah um I liked it. I don't understand the flack at it. I just know that it, those that and Ant Man are the worst rated Marvel movies now. I didn't really think too much of it. I thought it, like when I was watching it, it was like this is a visual spectacle, like most of the movies are these days. But like other than that, it was like okay, you know, like that sort of thing. Um, Chicken Run, Dawn of the Nugget. Okay, how about that? For, how about that shit? How about um, that sequel? How about that for a sequel we didn't know we needed, but I'm 100% on board with. Um, then we're getting a movie by David Fincher, starring Michael Fassbender, and it's the only reason why I bring it up, because of those two names, called The Killer. It's going to be on Netflix. Is he a, are there another snowman? I have no idea. Uh, then November 17th, Hunger Games, The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes. Okay. Well, was it Hunger Games? Yeah. So I'm actually okay. I'm actually really excited about this. I don't know if you know this. I actually really like the Hunger Games. Um, so this is about the early years of the Hunger Games. Yeah, dude, Hunger Games uh, first female action star. So uh, Tom Blythe is playing uh, Senator Snow or President Snow. However, though, in the movie, he's a mentor for the upcoming tenth Hunger Games and future president of Pan Am. So it's back Who's in the tenth. Who's President tenth. Snow? Uh, this is this is Tom Blythe. English actor, uh, Scott and Sid Benediction. He was the titular character on the epic series Billy the Kid. Oh, Hunter Schaefer's in it. Um, but yeah, so this is a new, um, so this is as a series that they're or not a series. This is a new movie that they don't know. Um, and it's it's out at the ten at the tenth annual Hunger Games. So it's before I think it's before all the war and everything happened even. Like, the major, like, blow-up that happened. Because when we were watching it, they were talking about the 75th Hunger Games. So this is... Early. So I'm excited for that. Um, Trolls 3. 
Uh, I'm just reading the list. Uh, Wish and then Leo. Leo is an... Oh, Adam Sandler movie on Netflix. There you go. What is it? It's called Leo. Mm. Adam Sandler, Bill Burr, uh, Cecile Strong, Jason Alexander, Rob Schneider. Oh, Jesus Christ. Let me see. Is there anything? There's no news on it. I literally clicked on it and it took me straight to Adam Sandler. Um, and then we end the year. And the end of the year looks uh, intriguing. Let's just word it like that. Uh, at the end of the year, we have uh, Wonka. Okay. Yeah, Warner Brothers fucking killing it with their movies this year. Uh, Wonka is uh, Timothy Chalamet and Michael Keegan. Michael Ke Keegan Michael Key are in it. Um, the Color Purple. Isn't that a book? Yes. So it's a movie now. An untitled Ghostbuster Afterlife sequel. Uh, what was who wrote the color purple? It was uh fucking God. Oh. Alice Walker. A story of lifelong struggles of an African American woman living in the South during the early nineteen hundreds. So that's going to be coming out in December, uh, uh, releasing against the untitled Ghostbusters sequel. <clears throat> so, like their most recent one? Yes, yeah, to the Afterlife one. Yeah, um, the uh, the all female Ghostbusters movie basically has been written out of existence. Apparently, I liked it. I don't, I don't understand the hate. I didn't see it. I saw bits and pieces of it online, and I thought that a lot of the jokes were kind of like, oh, like I'm going to say old Marvel because Marvel's getting a little bit better with some of their jokes. But, like, a lot of it felt just super forced. And, like, it was almost like, here's the joke. And then they just stare at you like, why aren't you laughing? Laugh at me. I laughed. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Oh. Um, so I'm going to I'm gonna switch the dates around here. But on Christmas Day, All Command of the Lost Kingdom comes out. And as we just went over earlier in the podcast, that apparently is getting ripped apart rumor-wise internally. Um, and the movie that I'm the most excited for... Of December and probably the entire year is Rebel Moon. Okay. December twenty yeah. second, out on Netflix. Star Wars, but not Star Wars. Star Wars, but not Star Wars. It's the Zack Snyder movie that Disney turned down, Warner Brothers then turned down, and after he did uh, Army of the Dead, they were like, "Yeah, we want you to do more stuff." And he was like, "Well, I wanted to do this." He's like, "I can tweak it so it's not Star Wars." And they're like, deal. It's already signed off like three sequels. So did you see uh, Rogue One? Not Rogue One. The uh, fucking Rogue One. Not Rogue One. Um, Andor. No, but I remember you telling me about it. I remember hearing other people say it was good. It's the best Star Wars project out. <laughs> they there was one thing that I read online that was the funniest fucking thing, which was people complaining about it because on the bottom of something there was like a screw. They're all yeah. <laughs> exactly. It's because they, they they had a phone and they're like it's a razor that they like turned into a phone. Like it was a little like shick like a razor to shave yourself and they like turned it into a thing and then there's a screw and then like one scene they have guns but they're AKs but they're laser AKs. And you're like you're like they're like they have AK47s and they're like it's just all like yeah, fucking who cares. Oh god. Um so apparently this this I didn't even know. Rebel Moon is scheduled to be released on December 22nd by Netflix, with a limited theatrical release being planned afterwards. That's kind of cool. So it can be nominated. Um, a follow-up, Rebel Moon Part 2, is scheduled to shoot with the film back-to-back, -back, which they already did. They filmed, they filmed Part 1 and 2. Yeah. Um, the premise is a peaceful colony on the edge of the galaxy is threatened by the armies of a tyrannical regent named Belasaurus. The desperate, civil, uh, the desperate civilians dispatch Korra, a young woman who has a mysterious past to seek out warriors from nearby planets to help them challenge the region. Also, you ready for this? Korra has a giant pet wolf. <laughs> and Korra is being placed by Sophia Butella, who you would know as the female mummy. Oh. Yep. She's the so main. She's the lead. Mm hmm. So that's uh, exciting. Like I said, I, this cast, I just. I, you got her, 
You got uh, Jamon Husan Honso. I'm, one of these days I'm going to fucking pronounce his name right. Ed Screen is apparently playing Bellasaurus, which I didn't know that one, so that's kind of cool. Um, yeah. Michael Hosman, uh, Donna Bo, you got Ray Fisher in it, Charlie Hunnan's in it, Anthony Hopkins, Sir Anthony Hopkins is playing the voice of Jimmy, a sentient JC-143 mechanized battle robot. And one time defender of the slain king. <laughs> it was awesome how they announced it. They announced it with a picture of the actual robot. And then it just said Hopkins behind it. Hop- Hopkins. Yeah. It was, uh, apparently he like he went and talked to Anthony Hopkins. And Hopkins was like, I don't think I can do what you want me to do. And he's like, and Zach was like, I just need your voice, sir. Like, I just, that's, that's all we need. He's like, I just want you to be immortalized in my, like, that sort of, and it was one of those things, because it was like, okay, and it, like, thinking about it, like, he was probably just like, yeah, whatever, fuck it, you know, but like, it's to like the, the check cleared. to the fans, it was one of those things, it was like, motherfucker, are we getting Anthony Hopkins voice in this? Like, all right. Is uh, that, that's not DC, that's like its own thing, right? Yeah, this is own separate, that's why a lot of, a lot of the people that wanted the Snyderverse DC stuff have slowly now just stopped with it because rebel moon is starting to gear up and we're all just full in on the rebel moon universe now because it's like it like netflix has literally said like we're gonna fucking fully back this so um jenna malone Stuart martin uh cory stole who you just saw in ant-man quantumania he was the giant floaty head he's in this Aaron. yep uh carl Hughes, um alfonso herrera uh, Cleopatra Coleman and a bunch of other people. So yeah, this movie looks awesome. Um, speaking about the film's future, the franchise Snyder said, "My hope is that it also becomes a massive IP and universe that can be built out." In February 9th, twenty twenty-two, it was revealed that Red Moon would be a two-part film, with both parts being shot back to back. They literally just finished filming. Um, Dude, I was—I don't mean to interrupt you. I yeah. was like. I just kept smelling something. I was going to say, I've like, seen you. Move. I've seen you like once or twice. Been like, Well, I was like, where's the smell come from? I was like, moving my desk. I, I did behind my monitor. There was a, a, a beer that's like half full Ooh. that like has probably been there for two weeks, Ooh. but it's all, it's a, it's a, 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 a fruit milkshake beer. Like, a, oh, like a, no. a, a, a milkshake shower. So it's like all fruit fermented. And I was like, and I smelled it. And I was like, yep, that's it. Oh. I was like, dude, I was like, where is that smell coming from? I was like, Jesus. I was like, am I going crazy? Oh. I was, like, I was I s- like, I feel weird. One of the final things that I got is uh, I saw a bit of the Samaritan movie on uh, Amazon. Okay. It wasn't actually bad. I actually liked it. it. There was, there's, a, okay. there's a twist that happens in it. Mm-hmm. Uh, have you seen it? Nope. There's a twist that happens in it. I'm not going to say what it is. There's a twist. And, Sylvester? Yep, with Sylvester. Yep. There's a twist that happens, and I didn't see the twist coming, and the twist happened, and I literally stood up. He's gay? No. Oh, shit. And you're close. Yeah. Um, but no, it, it, it literally a very good twist. Very solid for, for a standalone, by itself sort of thing. Very cool. Very unique movie. There was a lot of times, though, where the audio was weird to me. Like they would like be whenever they're outside. No, like when they're in, like, like the main one that I remember is the fight scenes, like the music and the fight scene was there was something weird about the the mixing, which is Amazon. It's you know there's only so much you can do right when you start getting down to these smaller, smaller, <laughs> right businesses. But yeah, uh, the budget, the budget was only a hundred awesome. million. Tulsa King's awesome. Tulsa King, that's. It's a Paramount show there we go. starring Sylvester Stallone. That's it. It's R- the one where he's a dr- drug dealer, right? He's like a mob mob guy. There we go. Does he at one point doesn't he go into like a weed shop? Yeah. Yeah, I've seen that. He's clip. like he like he's like you like he's like you pay me for protection. Well, he's we like Dude, protection. we're a legal business. He's like, eh, well, not anymore. <laughs> not anymore, you're not. You're now you're pay, with me. You're going to pay me now. Yeah. Um, so All right, so Wrap this up. Wrap it up. I don't have a, I don't have a lot of time. I was say, you, you, got, you, got stuff, you got stuff to do. Um, yeah. So that's the that's the outlook on the year for movies as we know of right now and what we're kind of excited for. I probably didn't list all of them that we're excited for, but that's that's most of them. Um. All right. <clears throat> let's let's do this. Wrap it up with a recommendation for the the audience. For the audience. The audience. Um. I'm going to recommend. 
I'm gonna let you go first. My movies aren't All right, here anymore. Well, this new movie That's came out Friday. I haven't watched it yet, but I'm recommending it okay. preemptively. Preemptive it's called Bruiser on Hulu. It's about a disconnected father trying to reconnect with the son he's never met and dealing with uh, the mother that he left and the new stepfather who won't let him in. Okay. And I think there's a twist in it, but it's looking real good. It's got 100% of Rotten Tomatoes right now. Ooh, so, wow. Bruiser on Netflix. Bruiser on Netflix. On Hulu. 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 Hulu, Hulu, Netflix, Hulu, Netflix, Amazon Prime, Ma- HBO, Max. Paramount. Um, so mine is going to be an old movie. Mine's from 2014. Mine is Road to Paloma. It's a Jason Momoa movie. Uh, this is literally the plot right here. After murdering his mother's rapist, Wolf, who's Jason Momoa, uh, a Native American flees from the law. Six months later, he meets up with a drifter called Cash and heads north to his sister's property where he intends to spend his where he intends to spread his mother's ashes but with the law right behind him his dream to lay his mother a piece may come at a price law man law man it's 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 kind of cool because it mixes the the our laws and then the native american laws with that sort of stuff so it's kind of a weird like it's kind of a cool weird dual movie almost happening at once i really enjoyed it and it's a role where i think momoa plays it is an early role for momoa because it's 2014 but it's him at his best and in my opinion momoa's best is when he's playing kind of that the straight man the the straight man where he's you know he's just kind of you know he's uh he doesn't talk much he looks like the badass he talks only when he needs to and he's just an imposing figure that's when i think momoa plays at his best so. Okay, well, I guess watch The Bad Batch as well from 2016 about a world where it doesn't have prisons. They just exile you exile you to a weird part of California, and uh, <laughs> he's a baddie, but like a strong, silent-type baddie. Ah. He saves people. Huh. It's a really weird movie. Great soundtrack. Super dark. There we go. There's, Jim Carrey's there's... in it. Jim Carrey's a uh, oh, cult leader. Yeah. I mean, that makes that, that kind of checks out. Um, there we go. So there's the three movies right there. Is Jim Carrey in it? Did I just speak offhand? Nope. Sorry. Keanu Reeves is in it. He's a cult leader. I don't know why I thought that was Jim Carrey. Keanu Reeves. Keanu Reeves. Kind of the same thing to an extent if you think about it cult leader wise. Cult leader, yeah. You got that kind of energy. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so let us know what you guys think of those movies. And if you guys have opinions or movies that you think we should watch, let us know down in the comments down below. Um, we'll be back next week and we'll talk about things stuff people or places carts carts um and as always depending on where you are morning afternoon even nice to have trouble stay safe and we we'll talk to y'all later <gasps> bye sure.